Hey, some would say your dad was a hero. After the sudden demise of his father, Will Harding, Steve was placed in temporary foster care until other arrangements could be made. He is 11 years old. He grew up with a single father and has never known any other family. And after the accident, Steve didn't know what to do. Steve, I have some good news for you. Steve looked at the social worker as she smiled and told him, We've been doing a little searching and we found your mother. After some paperwork, she'll be picking you up and you can go home. I don't have a mom. Well, perhaps your father never got the chance to tell you, but he and your mother got separated when you were quite young. But you don't worry. Things will be all right now. The next day at family court, Steve saw his mother for the first time. But for some reason, he didn't feel happy. He couldn't feel happy. She seemed so distant, like a stranger. It was a quiet drive, downtown, where they stopped at an apartment. His mother opened the car door and stared at him. Come on, are you going to get out or not? Steve followed her to the apartment. The place was cold. There was a strong odor in the air. Taking off her heels and her coat, she looked at Steve and shrugged. You can sleep on the sofa. I'm hungry. Look, kid. I don't know. And I don't care how your dad dealt with you. But in this house, you have to follow my rules. You want to eat, you work for it. Gina. She and Will separated when Steve was only two years old. And Steve barely has any memory of her. And she has erased whatever memories she had of him. Gina and Will had a horrible relationship, and the only thing Gina regrets is her marriage to Will, and blames him for everything she has had to go through since. Gina now works as a dancer at a nightclub, and sometimes has to offer extra services to afford herself. She's been living a reckless and unstable life. And in all this, now Steve has become another burden she has to bear. Steve watched as his mother went into her room and locked the door. Without much choice, he found his way to the kitchen and opened the fridge. But there wasn't anything but some stale bread. barely eating a few bites. Steve laid down on the sofa and dozed off. Sometime later that night, Steve woke up to the sound of voices. There was someone in the house. Peering over the sofa, he saw his mother talking with some guy. Who's the kid? My ex-husband's died a couple of days ago. 
ruined my life while he was alive, and now that he's dead, he still won't let me live in peace. Got the kid on custody. What are you so worried about? Just throw the kid out. I'm getting paid to keep the kid. So not so quick. Nice. Now how about you take care of me? Jack. Gina's boyfriend. For the past couple months, she has been with him, though she doesn't expect things to go any further than that. She knows Jack is only with her to live on her. But having him around is better than having no one. of the night went horribly for Steve, listening to his mother and Jack in the room. The next morning, he woke up to his mother yelling at him. Get up. You go to school, don't you? Here's the keys to the house. I'm not going to be home till midnight. Don't call me. Don't come looking for me. It was a long walk to school every morning, and much of the days, Steve was hungry and sleep deprived. As he reached the gates, he saw some of the boys in his class staring at him. What are you looking at? Steve ignored him and walked on, but the boys caught up with him. I saw your mom the other night. Ooh, she's some hot stuff, stuff. Leave me alone. Steve pushed past them, but they laughed on. What's she doing tonight? Tell her to call us. We can give her some business. Ever since his dad passed away, life has seemed to fall apart. Everyone at the school knows about his mother, what she does and there is nothing Steve can do or say to change that. He doesn't have a choice but to bear this. Passing through the day, Steve hurried to leave as soon as the dismissal bell rang. As he walked out the doors, however, he noticed a familiar face. It was the man from the hospital. Hey kid, how's it going? All right. Come on, I'll give you a ride home. Why are you here? There's something of your dad's that I was meant to give you. Steve was eager to open the box. But as soon as he stepped But as soon as he stepped foot in the house, he froze seeing another man with his mother. Looking away, he sat to the corner of the living room as they went inside. Why, Dad? Why did you have to leave me? With a deep breath, Steve opened the box, looking through his dad's wallet, a few photos of them, some gadgets, pocket knives, and a small wooden box. What is this? Steve tried to get it open, but the box wouldn't budge. Until he saw a lock on the side and pushed it in. All of a sudden, the box opened up and 
something he never expected fell out. A small revolver and a small piece of paper with an address of an auto shop. Hearing his mother's voice, Steve quickly hid the revolver in his bag and moved the box away. Later that night, when Jack returned and Steve managed to get a slice and have dinner, You're my hero, Officer Rogers. It's my duty. The next day went more or less the same at school, but all Steve was waiting for was to go out to the field by the riverside, away from everyone, so he could check out his dad's gun. Hey, look who's here. The son. I heard your mom's business is going good these days. Why are you walking home? Can't she buy you a bicycle? Steve stared at the boys, clenching his jaws. They got off their bikes and pushed him back. What, you want to fight? I think he needs us to teach him a lesson. Maybe he wants us to teach his mom a lesson. Come on, he's a waste of time. Let's go. Finally, all alone, Steve went down to the bank. He took out the revolver and checked it out. Six bullets. Got a call from the social worker. She's gonna be here tomorrow. So clean the place and look decent. Gina dropped a day-old pizza onto the table. Finish the leftovers. Who's here now? She opened the door to their landlord, Philip. It's been a week since the rent was due. I need a couple more days, Philip. I've been going through some trouble. Got another mouth to feed. I need the money now, honey. If you can't get the cash, maybe you can pay me some other way. Not here. Jack might come any time. My place. Steve watched as his mother closed the door and left with the landlord. wasn't ours, so she returned. That night, Steve couldn't sleep. He couldn't take it. You? What are you doing here? What the hell you want, kid? Stay away. Stay away from my mother. 
Go back before I kick you and your mother out. It wasn't until the next night, Philip's body was discovered, but in this part of the neighborhood, no one cared, and the police never got to the bottom of any case either. Who you think done that? Don't know. Deserved it. At least don't have to pay the rent now. About that, I need cash. For what? I gave you a hundred last week. I need it. You gonna give it or not? No. What do you mean, no? Ain't you getting paid for that? You You do what I tell you. I pay for this roof. I pay for the food you eat. I ain't gotta listen to anyone. What you say to me? As Jack got up to get a hold of Gina, she threw the glass at him, and chaos began in the house. Steve anxiously sat listening to Jack push Gina into the room, and began hitting him. Trying to fend off Jack, Gina saw Steve walk in and yelled at him. Steve, go from here. But Steve coldly looked at Jack. Leave this house now. Oh, so this is what's going on. You think you guys can hoard on me? Before Jack could do anything, Steve pulled out his gun. fired. Jack is dead. You What? What did you do? You killed him. The police aren't going to be here. What am I going to do? They're going to blame it on me. My life got ruined the day you were born. But then, Steve pointed the gun at Gina. Steve. Steve, what, what are you doing? Put the gun down. I'm your mother. You were never a mother. Were Gina and Jack dead? Steve knew he had to get out of there, but where would he go? Taking out his dad's box, Steve looked at the piece of paper with the address. Here. What are you doing here, kid? Boss, this is Will's kid. Will's kid? About 12 years ago, Will and Gina met at a nightclub and happened to get involved with each other. It all seemed like love at first. But when Gina got pregnant, things took a turn. She wasn't ready to be a mother. But it was too late for anything else. Will and Gina's relationship started to fall apart. And they practically began living their own lives. And all this 
when Will found out Gina had been cheating on him. He left her and took Steve with him. On one hand, without Will, Gina set foot on the wrong path. She got herself involved in the wrong business with the wrong people and wasted herself. And on the other hand, struggling to raise a child and make ends meet on an honest living. Will eventually ended up working for Mr. Boris's underground syndicate. However, knowing this life of his might put Steve's life in danger. Will kept his son a secret. A secret. He didn't want Steve to go through what he had gone through to survive. Until the night he passed away in a shootout. And Steve ended up back at his mother's place. But after all this, life has brought Steve here. Welcome to the family, son. Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.